Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Um, it's been a long time, I know, but I've had a real crazy year. The last eight months, I've had almost no time for anything HEMA related, including reviews. Um, hopefully I'll be able to change that in the future. I should have a lot more spare time coming up. And uh, what I'd like to do is close out the end of this year with a review for Thok Personal Armors um, Weapon Master Gloves. A couple things I'd like to mention before I get into the details about the gloves is um, this review was uh, sparked a little bit by other people's reviews. Um, I agreed so much with what most people were saying. I thought since I've reviewed so many gloves, I should put my own take out there on them, which I hope will help uh, the designer of the gloves sort of uh, make version two and improve upon things in the future. The other thing I thought I should mention about these gloves is the intended use of these gloves, even by the designer themselves, was not really ever for heavy duty weapon fighting such as long swords and pole arms. It's kind of a mid-range glove. It does have an add-on for long sword, uh, which does make it a little bit better for long sword, but I don't have that right now. And when I get that, I'll do a follow-up review with that component. So unfortunately I won't be able to talk on that much, but there are reviews out there with people talking about that component. Uh, one of the first things I want to talk about is the general design of the gloves um, without getting into too many details about the protection at the moment um, and how they're sort of intended to be used together. So this glove is a uh, outer shell glove with an inner glove design. The glove should ship with a sort of lightly padded version of the inner glove, which personally I won't get much use out of, but some people might. And then it's also comes with a little bit more of a robust inner glove. So this glove has a little bit thicker foam padding over top of the fingers, the back of the hand, which is removable right there, which I'll get into in a moment. It's got a little bit more um, on the thumb. And then it's also got uh, sort of rigid finger caps built in. Itself is made out of a very breathable mesh, which is important. I've already got that one inside this glove. When you do get the gloves layered up together, because there's mesh, you don't build up too much heat. I put this glove on heat-wise on par with most, most other five-finger gloves and leather gloves out there in general. Um, it's a little bit hotter than most because of the double layers, but this mesh really does help. Um, then you have the outer shell glove, which is made up of a bunch of different components, which generally I've got no complaints about. The initial fit and finish of the glove itself is good, but I'll do a long-term review in the future. And there are other reviews out there that where some people have done some durability testing with them. Once again, go check those out. Overall, I like the design of the glove. The glove itself is compact, very light. Even with the inner glove, this more rigid one in there, after a little bit of break in time, it starts feeling much like a leather glove. Um, also, the cuff has grown on me. Anyone who watches my video knows I really like hourglass design gloves. Plus, as you can see by the wrist design, this fits over, just like an hourglass glove, almost all forearm guards I own, including my built-in, my long coat here has built-in forearm guards in here. It works with that too. Um, I haven't had um, anything that I own at least that this type of forearm guard does not work with. Now, personally, the cuff's a bit too long for me, but for a type of person who likes to use um, thinner forearm guards, um, kind of like the Destroyer Mod version and whatnot, this will actually help out because it overlaps so much over top of your forearm guard, it just adds an extra layer of protection. In fact, as I mentioned already, they've grown on me. I don't mind them. Um, the inner glove itself comes it's, it's tough to get it in there at first, but once it in, once it's in there, it has a, sorry, once it's in there on the inside, it's got a little bit of Velcro, you might be able to hear that, that holds it in there. And they're not too difficult to take on and off compared to any other five finger glove out there. And the only thing is when you take them off, you just want to pinch the fingers and they come off pretty easily. Um, I recommend always leaving them in and not taking them out. Because, uh, like I say, getting them in and out, especially with the, the finger caps, can be a little bit annoying. Um, the glove itself um, has sort of a canvas-like material on the top here to, I guess, help make the top a little more robust against hits and burrs on weapons and so on and so forth. It's got leather components. 
It's got uh, sort of a suede leather component, uh, which is usually um, on top of harder padding. And then it's got softer padding built on the palm of the hands, on the outside edge, and in a few other areas. One, one thing I like about these gloves, uh, which I actually now want to see on all gloves, is this sort of hexagonal rubber design material that's been put on the palm. This here is, in my opinion, a little game changer. It gives me so much grip on my weapons, I now want it on all my gloves. I also want to see it on the tips of the fingers as well, probably coming down to the first or second knuckle. Uh, one, it'll help pick things up, and also, I think it's just going to add to the durability of any glove, just having that over top of the whatever component is chosen for the, for the rest of the glove itself. With that being said, overall, I do like the design of the glove. It's very light, it's very mobile. Once again, the theme of this video is it's not a heavy duty glove, and that's very apparent in the design of this glove. Most of the components are very thin, and even when it gets to heavier side swords, such as a messer or a back sword, their protection does become questionable. And since I just mentioned that, we might as well get into the protection of the gloves next. Okay, so I'll start with the protection of the inner glove. So the inner glove, the cool thing about this is it's very thin, it fits in, and it, in fact, I happen to have a whole bunch of leather gloves. Um, I've got too many leather gloves. I've got all sorts of, that's not even all of them. Um, the one thing about these is I have different sizes of that, and my large or extra large versions of those, these gloves actually slide into those. It does make them a little stiff, but it's kind of amusing that this will actually fit into other gloves. In fact, I stuck this into my Infinity. It was too tight because it was never designed. Uh, the inner glove was too tight. It was never designed for that. But I thought to myself, because this will definitely fit inside an Infinity, if this type of glove was on the inside of an Infinity and then secured in there better, that glove would be ridiculously protective. But with that said, for this glove, I still think this inner glove could be improved a little bit without changing the mobility and size of it in general. First of all, my biggest complaint is the finger caps are way too small. So most finger caps that you buy for leather gloves generally look like this. I mean, I've cut and trimmed this one up a bit, but they're, they come in different lengths and different sizes, but these ones are so small, they actually fit on the inside of these ones. Some of these are so small, they actually don't seat on my fingers properly. Now, I don't have very big fingers. So someone out there with bigger hands than me, these won't work. Um, the thumb is okay. It seats in there pretty well. In fact, the thumb is generally the size of this, which is pretty normal. So the one thing I think that does need to be improved on this right away are the finger caps need to be wider by a little bit, and they also need to be deeper. They aren't quite as deep as this style, so they don't quite sit over the finger enough to provide adequate, adequate uh, finger protection, in my opinion. Outside of that, I love the design and I love the fact they're built in here. They just need to be thicker. Um, with that being said, um, on this glove, inner glove, which is already inside, the finger cap was even smaller than this one on the pinky, that it didn't fit at all, and in fact, I shoved one more of these in here, so this pinky finger has the inner cap plus one of these in there, which kind of goes to show you how small these caps actually are. Okay, uh, sorry, something I meant to mention in the video that I noticed, I said I was gonna talk about, but I never did, was the fact that on these inner gloves here, everything is removable and replaceable as well. That also includes the fingers. So there's a secondary pocket here, and that also includes the fingertips. So, one of my complaints about this glove, as you guys have seen, is these fingertips are too small. Um, I'm actually going to probably pull some of my fingertips out of my larger leather gloves and see if I can sit them in here, which might help out quite a bit. So the outer glove is adequate. It's put together very well, but it's not overly protective. I'd say it's good for your standard training sabers, your standard training side swords, rapiers, thicker rapiers, um, hybrid rapiers, you know, the ones that you can use for side sword or rapier, uh, two smaller and lighter 
back swords and messers. But once you start getting into the the any HEMA practitioner know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about like heavier arming swords, back swords, and heavier larger size messers, this won't really work as it stands even with the inner glove. Now, like I said, I don't have the add-on piece, which is primarily designed for longsword, which I believe for those would help uh, quite a bit. Overall, this glove, I think, is adequate for mid, sort of mid-sized weapons. But it's got a few key problems, which I think can be rectified and fixed in order to make this glove better. So, one of the components is the top of the handguard. So, even with the inner glove, which has got the extra padding, and this real, which once again I forgot to mention, or maybe I didn't, this top piece here is actually replaceable and I believe you can pull it out from the top, but it's very thin. You can see I can actually bend it, and actually with my own fist, if I just punch it like that, I can feel my fist through two layers. Which means this top part, which really does not control weight or m maneuverability of the uh, glove itself, is way too thin. It could be a lot thicker. Second of all, it doesn't come over the knuckles here enough. And once again, I still don't think it would change the mobility of the fingers to have it come over a little bit. One of the key areas of lacking of protection on this glove is the outer sides of the hands and fingers. It's just actual foam padding. And even with the inner glove, which also has very little of that, there's virtually no protection on the sides, and particularly here, to be hit by heavier weapons. Anything that would hit you on an odd angle from here is going to damage your hand. And in my opinion, this is a really easy fix for this glove. You can see how the threads of the top sort of canvas material here are sewn on the top layer of this padding. If this was just slightly redesigned so that this top piece rolled over the sides on each side, you'd have to change sort of the componentry and the way everything meets here. And then this top piece, same thing, was built to fit into that. All of a sudden, you'd have side padding on both sides. And then if this was made thicker or it was sold with options, of, oh yeah, there we are, sorry. It's the, you can see, there you go, you can see how thin that is. It's just a real tiny, thin piece of plastic. So, get that back in there. So, like I say, if they made that thicker and they had it roll over the sides, that would probably improve this glove without changing the mobility of this glove whatsoever. Might make it a little bit wider, but so little so by a couple millimeters, in my opinion. And this is already a very thin glove to begin with compared to all the other gloves I own. So adding a millimeter here and there, in my opinion, isn't going to change the over functionality, overall functionality of this glove. The next area is here on the fingers. As I should have mentioned, there are little rigid sort of plastic finger caps. They're, I guess they're supposed to be like little knuckle caps. They don't really do much at all. And in between those and on the sides of your fingers, there's virtually no padding. And for heavier weapons, including heavier backswords or longswords, there is not adequate protection there. Anything that will come down on your fingers is going to crush them. There's no rigid hard padding. There's nothing to stop compression, um, especially if it comes on an angle that's going to hit on the side. Now, like I've mentioned, there is that long sword piece. If you put it on, it does protect the knuckles from about here up. I guess that leaves me, where do I stand with these gloves? I could keep going on and on about some details about the gloves here and there, but I, I think in order for brevity of the video, I sort of need to make a conclusion. Can I recommend these gloves? Well, I like the gloves for the mobility, the general design of them. I love that cuff. I think I can only recommend these gloves for what their intended use was for. And that's the most important part about this video that I mentioned at the beginning. If you're gonna use these gloves to replace a Red Dragon, to replace any one of those leather ones I threw down on the ground, it's a better glove. Um, Although a Red Dragon has better top protection, believe it or not, these gloves have better fingertip protection than a Red Dragon, for instance. I know a lot of people use Red Dragons for side sword and, and saber, so that's why I bring them up. But is it better than like a Red Dragon with fingertips shoved in it? Barely. So, but honestly, as I mentioned with a lot of my gloves, with a few key changes to a few key components, this glove could become even better without actually, I think, changing the overall design of the glove, the way the glove is meant to function, etc., etc. 
Overall, I can recommend these gloves as an upgrade uh, for leather gloves, even Red Dragons. Um, and if you're looking for that glove that is versatile that you can use for even a rapier, I'm not sure why you'd use them for a rapier, but you could. They're, they're compact enough for that. Particularly if you use that other just padded inner glove for these. In fact, for a rapier, you wouldn't even need to use an inner glove for these. Um, if you're using these gloves as they were intended to be designed for, for mid-range weapons, they're actually an upgrade and um, definitely worth buying. This glove was clearly well thought out. It's well designed. Um, it has very, very specific components chosen for very specific areas. Um, and with that being said, I think with a little bit more R&D on these, this could become an even stronger glove and a contender out there against any of the heavy hitters out there, such as the Infinity or the Pro Gauntlet. All right, everyone, thanks again for watching. I hope to get uh, more use out of these gloves soon um, and do a long-term review for you all. Um, until then, have a happy holidays, and I'll see you guys all in the new year.